Senator Waters. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy President. I move that the Senate take note of the answer given by Senator Conroy on behalf of the Minister for Sustainability, Environment, Water, Population and Communities in response to my question regarding the concerns of government agencies on coal seam gas and the inadequacy of state regulation of these matters. Uh, now, unfortunately, the minister wasn't able to shed an awful lot of light on the questions that I posed to him. Uh, the first issue that I'd raised in my question were the concerns that various government agencies, including CSIRO and the National Water Commission, have uh, recently had and, and publicly stated about the long-term impacts of coal seam gas and the cumulative impacts, which of course are not being looked at. Uh, and it's not just those bodies who hold those concerns. The Queensland government itself, through its coordinator general, which is effectively the approving body for these matters, in its um, recommendation report to the minister, admits that it doesn't know the long-term impacts on the Great Artesian Basin. So there's a massive amount of uncertainty here about what this industry is going to do to our groundwater, on which much of our farming relies, um, on which all of us rely for our three square meals a day. Uh, the minister said that, oh, don't worry about it, the federal conditions cover that. They require a stage one coal seam gas water monitoring and management plan. Well, I'm aware of that, and those plans should have now been prepared. The uh, companies had six months to do that. I would now like the minister to release those plans. They've not been publicly available. They're not subject to public scrutiny, and they should be. So I would like to see a copy of those plans, which are meant to contain programs and schedules for aquifer connectivity studies. Now, on that, uh, it's, it makes no sense to me that an approval would be granted without the information in those aqu aquifer connectivity studies. Surely, before the minister could be satisfied that it was okay to approve coal seam gas, he should have done such aquifer connectivity studies, or at least be in possession of them. Um, unfortunately, it seems that the precautionary principle has once again gone out the window. Uh, I next asked the minister about some alarming admissions made by the Queensland government uh, in the form of their LNG enforcement body head, uh, made last week at a conference which was broadcast on um, Radio National Breakfast last Thursday, where that fellow said that coal seam gas would have aquifer and regional scale impacts. And not only that, that the Queensland government is only monitoring 10 per cent of the coal seam gas wells for leaks or for aquifer connectivity. Um, now, I'm afraid Minister Conroy and, and, and through him, Minister Burke, uh, says that they're not aware of those comments. Well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If they are saying that state regulation is adequate, then surely they need to inform themselves of the various positions of the states, in particular the Queensland government where this industry is most advanced, and the fact that these impacts are acknowledged to be likely to occur. Uh, and, and on the issue of whether it should be left to the states, we are not proposing that it be taken off the states. What we are proposing is an additional tier of regulation, an additional protection in the form of federal regulation, because groundwater and food security are national issues and should be dealt with by this parliament. In my final question to the minister, I raised uh, the mounting scientific and community concern about coal seam gas and, again, the inadequate state regulation of coal seam gas, uh, which the minister said he didn't accept that premise. Well, I'm afraid it's a bit tricky to say he's not across what the states say, but then not to accept that it's inadequate. How can he not? If he's not appraised of the information about the states, how can he be confident that there's an adequate regime? Didn't add up to me. Um, I pressed him on whether or not he would adequately resource the department's monitoring and enforcement section um, to monitor the various federal conditions that Minister Burke has imposed. Uh, unfortunately, he, he didn't give a response to that, and I certainly hope Minister Burke follows up with uh, some more detail about resourcing for those important public servants who do a critical job and deserve more support and more numbers. I also raised the need for a water trigger in our environmental laws and asked whether the government would reconsider its refusal to back a moratorium until we have better information about long-term impacts. Now, unfortunately, the minister didn't address either of those two points, and they really go to the nub of this industry. The federal government is not properly regulating the industry because it lacks the power to do so. It has no water trigger under our environmental laws, and that should be rectified, and will, of course, be moving um, for just that in this place shortly. Uh, but lastly, the moratorium. It was with great shame and embarrassment that last week 
Every single party bar the Greens voted against my motion for a moratorium on coal seam gas until we have better information about its impacts. I don't see what is wrong with getting full information, or at least better information, before one makes a decision with significant consequences. Do the old parties not want better information about long-term impacts? Do they not care about long-term impacts? Are they simply blinded by the royalties that they're receiving from this industry? Um, it, it would appear so. So the Greens will not vacate this space. We will be pushing for better laws and better regulation on coal seam gas because that's what these communities deserve and that's what our environment needs. Thank you, Senator Waters.